Thank you to Track Club for sponsoring this video. Get two months of free music for your content by using the link in my description. Hey everybody, welcome to the channel. My name is Victor Melcher. I'm a filmmaker and content creator. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how to edit your videos in DaVinci Resolve. I'll break it down step by step and even show you a couple tricks of how I speed up my editing process. So with that being said, let's get into it. Once you have DaVinci Resolve opened up, you can just go down to the bottom right corner, click new project, then just title your project, click create. And then on the bottom of the screen, this is how you get between all of your pages. So we can skip these first two pages and we're just gonna go straight to the edit page. And before we import our footage, just hold shift nine. And what this is gonna do, this is going to open up your project settings. So you can adjust your timeline resolution, timeline frame rate, and your color management settings, which these are pretty important. So first just click master settings. And for timeline resolution, as you can tell, you have a bunch of different options. I recommend using the same resolution you shot your footage in. So most of the time I'm using 3840 by 2160 Ultra HD. And if you scroll all the way to the top, you can actually do a custom resolution, which sometimes I like to do 2880 by 2160. This is going to give me a four by three aspect ratio, which this is cool if you want a vintage look to your videos. But for now, let's just go back to 3820 by 2160. And if you are editing vertical content for Instagram, TikTok, or YouTube shorts, just toggle on use vertical resolution so that way you can edit your content vertically. You can always change your timeline resolution, but one thing that gets locked in once you start editing is your timeline frame rate. And I recommend using the same frame rate that you shot most of your footage in. I shot in 23.976 frames per second, so just make sure to match those up. Next, we're gonna go on the left to color management. And if you're editing on a Mac device, you're just gonna wanna make sure that your color science is DaVinci YRGB. Your timeline color space is Rec709-A. Then just click save. Go to the top left where it says DaVinci Resolve. Click that. And then under preferences, go down to general. And then you're gonna wanna make sure use Mac display color profiles for viewers is toggled on. And also automatically tag Rec 709 scene clips as Rec 709A. Click save. And that's just going to ensure that if you are editing on a Mac, the colors that you're seeing are gonna match the colors of the final export. Next, we're just gonna wanna make sure that we are on the edit page. So first we can just go right under where it says master on the top left, right click, and then you can create a new bin. I'm just gonna call this A roll. And you can repeat this process and create as many bins as you like. This is just a way to keep your footage organized. Now we're just gonna go to A roll and press Command I. This will bring up your finder and this is where you can import footage. So say this is my main footage on the bottom. I'm just going to click and drag down to highlight it all. Click open and then this will import all of my footage. So now that I got my A roll and my B roll footage imported, I want to import some music. Now, when it comes to finding music for my projects, I love using Track Club, which is an amazing music licensing platform for filmmakers and creators. And one of my personal favorite ways to find music is through similarity search. What this allows me to do is paste the song of a YouTube or Spotify link, and it's gonna give me similar sounding songs. So let's just hop into Spotify real quick. And for example, The Wallows, they're a fun indie pop band I've been listening to. So what I'll do is just on their page I can find the song that I like and click the three dots on the right go to share copy the song link let's go back into track club press command v to paste the link click search and now if I scroll down I have similar sounding songs to the one that I really like if I want even more control I can go to mix lab on the bottom right and if I wanted to I could mute the tambourine or maybe I want to mute the vocals and once I've customized it to the way that I want I can just go to the top right click download and download it as my mix, or I can download the original stems. Now let's go back into DaVinci Resolve, press Command I, go to Downloads, and I can import my song. Thank you to Track Club for sponsoring this video. Get two months of free music for your content with the link in my description. Now if I want to preview a clip, just double click it, and then press spacebar to play or pause the video. And then this little bar underneath the video, I can use that to scrub through the footage. And then as I'm scrubbing through the footage, say maybe I want this to be the start point, all I have to do is press I, and then say I want this part to be the end point, just press O, click the clip, drag and drop it into my timeline, and now I have it. And then if you hover over the borders of each section of DaVinci Resolve, you can drag and you can adjust it like so. And if you hover over the preview segment with your mouse, you can use the scroll wheel to zoom out or zoom in on your frame. And if you want to press play, you just use the space bar. Press the space bar again to pause it. This little plus and minus toggle on the right, this will help you zoom in and out of your timeline so you can see specific points of your footage. 
One thing that's going to speed up your process while cutting significantly is if you go to DaVinci Resolve on the top left corner, click Keyboard Customization, and we're just gonna change three keys. First one is gonna be Q. This shortcut is currently Source slash Timeline Viewer, so I'm just gonna click that, and I'm gonna go to the right or under Command, and I'm going to Unassign Q. Then I'm gonna click All Commands, Go to search, type start to playhead, and then under ripple for start to playhead, unassign the old shortcut and assign Q. Next click W, and again, we're gonna do that same process. So I'm just gonna unassign the old keyboard shortcut. Go back to all commands, search end to playhead. And then again, under ripple, I'm gonna unassign the old shortcut and assign W. Last one, we're going to click B, click blade edit mode, unassign that. Go back to all commands, search split clip, unassign the old shortcut, assign B, then go down to the bottom right, click save. And you can just title this DaVinci Resolve New or whatever you like for the new preset name. Click OK, click close on the bottom right. And now we're ready to start cutting our footage. So I did a couple of different takes. Let's just say this is where I want to start my video. All I have to do now is use my keyboard shortcut, press Q and it instantly trimmed that piece off of the clip, which is really cool. And now let's say I want to get rid of this giant gap where I wasn't talking. And you can tell I'm not talking because there's like no waveform, so this is just a pause. So what I can do is just go right here to this point, click B, and B is going to automatically split the clip right there. Go to the point where I want it to start, click W, and now I instantly trimmed that down. And now let's just zoom in on the timeline a bit. And let's just say I want to get rid of this awkward pause, but it's a bit more fine. So instead of using my mouse, I can just use the arrows on my keyboard, go back a little bit, let's just say right here, and then I can click W and that instantly trim that piece off. Go right a little bit, click Q, and now it just connected them. That's pretty much how you trim and cut different ends of your footage. And you can also hover near the end of the clips and you can trim it that way as well, just by clicking and dragging. And then say if there's just a physical blank space in your timeline, you can just click that, press delete or backspace, and it'll connect it again. Now one thing I like to do if I have this long talking head clip and I know I'm gonna trim it a lot more is I'm just gonna go to the color grading tab real quick, go towards the top left, click clips, select your first one, hold shift, select your second one, right click, and then you can just add this into a new group and this is gonna save you some time color grading and I'll show you that a little bit later. But let's just go back to the edit page for now. And one helpful thing too, say maybe you just made a mistake, press Command Z, it'll undo the change you just made. And if you hold Shift Command Z, it'll redo the change you just made. And now maybe I want to add in a B-roll clip. So on the top left, I'm just gonna click B-roll where I have all my footage. And let's just find a clip real quick. This one's pretty cool. It's upside down right now, but we'll fix that a little bit later. I'm just gonna press I for my in point, O for my out point. And if I click and drag the center of the clip, it's going to bring in the audio and the video file linked together. But because it's a B-roll clip, I just want to grab the video file. So I'll click this little film icon and drag it down and put it directly over the top of my talking clip. And then the same goes if you only want the audio file, you can just click this waveform icon, drag it down underneath and you're good to go. Now I wanna make a few adjustments to this clip. So in the inspector, this is where you could zoom in and out, adjust the X and the Y axis. And if you want to reset anything, just click this little icon on the right. In this case, I want to flip the clip upright. So where it says flip this little icon on the right, click that. If I scroll down, I have cropping, so I can crop the left, right, top, and bottom of the clip if I need to. Dynamic zoom, if I toggle this on, Basically now it's going to give me a slow zoom out. Or if I click swap, this is gonna give me a slow zoom in of my clip. So this can just add some nice dynamic motion to your clip. Next is composite. You can go through the various modes or adjust the opacity if you need. We have speed change and stabilization. Stabilization is also pretty helpful if you do have handheld footage that is a little bit shaky. I recommend using the translation mode and then click stabilize. You have lens corrections. So maybe if you shot in an ultra wide lens, maybe you do need to add a bit of distortion correction. You can do that as well. I'm just gonna reset it. Then you have retiming and scaling, which most of the time you really don't need to worry about this. Now I'm gonna zoom in on the timeline a little bit. Maybe I want to add a little transition to this clip. So I'm just gonna go down to my toolbox on the left, click video transitions. And one that I like using, if I scroll down, it's under motion. 
its push. So what I'm gonna do is click and drag this at the end of the clip. There we go. And then at the end of the transition, I can click and extend or shorten the length of the transitions. And this is how the push transition looks normally. But we can do a couple things to make that look a little bit better. So in the inspector on the top right corner, if I just scroll down, I'm just gonna add some motion blur. And then for the ease, I'm just gonna add in and out. And what this is gonna do, it's just gonna make then transition a lot smoother. Now let's say maybe I want to add a title. So I'm just gonna click title. Let's just do basic text. I'm gonna drag and drop it over my clip. Then I'm gonna extend my title to match the full length of the B-roll clip. And right now this is what it would look like. So what I'm gonna do to get my transitions to match on both is I'm just going to click this transition on my B-roll clip press command C to copy it, click the end of the basic title. Once it turns green, press command V to paste the transition. And now it goes perfectly. And then in the inspector icon, we can make our title. And then you can change your font face, the size, the color. Let's just change the font real quick. And then if you scroll down, one way of making your title a bit more visible is drop shadow. So all you have to do is change the offset on the X and Y axis. This is the title without the drop shadow, and this is the title with the drop shadow. If you want your title to have a glow over it, you can just click color, and you just want it to be the exact same color as your title. And now I'm gonna go to settings, and using the X axis, I'm gonna click and drag to the left. And I wanna put pocket three in this segment, that way it's not covering the camera itself. So what I can do is I can click this title, hold option, drag up, and now I basically duplicated the title and then I'm going to go to title in the inspector, put pocket three. Then I'm gonna go back to the settings and then using the X axis, I'm just gonna do 1036 positive. Then I'll put it on the other end of the screen. So that's how you assemble and edit in the edit page. And if you did want special effects, you can go into the fusion page, which is next. Personally, I very rarely use the fusion page because I don't do a ton of special effects. So we're gonna skip the fusion page and go straight to the color grade page. And I have a ton of fully in-depth color grading tutorials, which will be linked in the top right corner. But right now, I'll just walk you through majority of the basic color grading settings. So on the top left, if you click clips, this is where you can go through and find the different clips in your timeline. Let's just grab this B-roll clip and I'm going to toggle it off so I can make the screen a bit bigger. The segment in the right corner is gonna be my node tree. So I'm gonna press option S a couple times and this will create three separate nodes. Nodes are essentially like layers in DaVinci Resolve. So a simple rule to follow is add your LUT or your color grading plugin on the last node and then do your basic color correction on the first node. So let's just click the last node and if we're using LUTs, go to the top left, click LUTs and if you do need to import LUTs that you already have downloaded, just go on the bottom right corner to this little cog, click that. Under color management, scroll all the way down, click open LUT folder, press command N and say maybe you have your LUTs in your download file, click drag it into the LUT folder, X both those pages out, click update lists and on the bottom right, just click save. Your let should pop up here. If not, you'll just have to restart DaVinci Resolve. And now let's just say I wanna add a let. I would just click the one I want, drag it and drop it on the last one. Now I wanna do some basic color correction. So I'm gonna to go to the first node and on the left, I'm gonna click this color wheel. And then on the bottom left, maybe I want to boost my shadows up a little bit. Maybe I want to drop my highlights want to go up and I want to warm up the temperature, adjust the contrast. And if I press P, I can view my clip in full screen and now I have a basic color grade. Press P to exit out of the full screen. Go to the next clip I want to color grade, just click that. And for this one, if you remember at the beginning, we grouped them together. So this clip and this clip can be graded as one. All I have to do is go to the top right, click where it says clip, click group post clip, press option S to create some nodes. Click the effects tab in the top right, scroll down, and I use Dehancer as my color grading plugin. I'm just gonna make my changes real quick. And now it saved me some time because I didn't have to color grade both of these individually, it just color graded both of them as a group. Next page we're gonna go to is Fairlight, which this is the audio page. And in the top right, you can use this toggle to zoom in and out of the timeline. And then you can also use this left toggle to expand the waveform so you can see them a little bit better. What I'll do is I will just click drag and highlight the talking clips that I had. 
right click them, go to normalize audio levels, normalization mode YouTube, and then set level relative. Click normalize and all it's going to do is just ensure that I have no extremely quiet parts and no extremely loud parts. I just want to make sure that my audio is between negative 10 and negative 5 decibels. So it looks pretty good around that point. And one last trick I like to do is where it says voice isolation under a one, just toggle it on. Then for the controls, click that. And then I usually set my amount of voice isolation to around 50 and that'll just give me some pretty clean sounding audio. Lastly, we're going to click this little rocket ship to export our final edit. And it's pretty simple. So for the file name, you can just title it. For the location, this is where you're going to be exporting it to. I usually like to click desktop so I can see it once I X out of DaVinci Resolve. Click save, render it as a single clip. And then for format and codec, MP4 is super common and so is H.264 if you're planning on uploading to YouTube and other social media platforms. Timeline resolution, you already chose. Timeline frame rate, you already chose. For the quality, I will switch it from automatic to restrict to and then set it to around 25 thousand kilobits per second make sure you toggle on multi-pass encode it's going to render through your timeline a couple times to ensure the quality is good click advanced settings for data levels i click full scroll down some more force sizing to highest quality and force to bear to highest quality just make sure those are toggled on click add to render queue click render all and you're good to go all right, everyone, so that's how to edit your footage in DaVinci Resolve from start to finish. And if you do have any questions, feel free to let me know in the comments down below, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.